Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode four of Breaking Sad. I'm very lucky to have uh, Mr. Randall Waller with me today. <laughs> Privileged, blessed. Um, I've known Randall for five or six years, but known of him for much longer than that, and been lucky to, oh, there's that word again, I'm very grateful to have uh, worked alongside him a few times, played some gigs together. He's We've had some fun. Had some great times, yeah, and we'll, we'll get into all that. Um, Randall has toured the world with Shania Twain and Keith Urban and Dragon and Rose Tattoo and a very, very long list of people. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll cover a bit of that stuff as well, but uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for doing this, man. Good to be here. All right, so um, we'll dive, dive right in. Um, so I wanted to ask you firstly about, uh, I guess you're a singer, a great frontman lead singer, but also a great lead guitarist, and how you've gone with balancing blending those two together or separating them and finding work for yourself as one mm. or the other or both because mm. um, you so, sort of like me you're in a unique situation where you're you're the hybrid mm. hy hybrid athlete. hybrid yeah <laughs> and a lot of people don't don't that well they become suspicious when you uh say that you do both mm. um because then they feel like i don't know people tend to feel like they're uh, one must be compromised Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, you can't you can't do everything, you know. Well, um, in fact, uh, for quite a while there, I was actually a house engineer at a big studio uh, in the city that had a big SSL and, and stuff like that, and I was actually, you know, recording albums and stuff like that, and and I would say to some people, I was like, um, that I was, uh, you know, when they said, "What are you doing?" I was like, oh, "I'm." house engineer at the studio and they said oh it didn't make sense to them because that was in the context of it might have been at a gig or something mm. and uh and so and they said oh so what you're just getting level to tape are you and what is yeah, who's, who's uh, the real uh, one um well no, i'm kind of engineering and mixing and recording drums and and all sorts of things yeah, yeah. uh a lot of that a lot of the early drum stuff I actually forgot, and I did a job a little while ago where I had to mix some drums, and and I I made it sound it was horrible. You know, I'd done such a terrible, horrible job because I'd kind of forgotten everything about mixing live drums, you know. And and it took Buzz helped me out, but uh, it was it was just embarrassing. But however, back then I was recording drums all the time, mm -hmm. all the time, and and recording big bands and uh, bands all live in the studio and, and all of that. But all of this to say that I had two separate business cards, one that I would give out to, you know, in the studio and another one that, that said uh, engineering production type stuff mm -hmm. and another one that said guitar vocals. Was that, and that was to avoid pigeonholing to... Yeah, well, well, because well, it, I it was actually to pigeonhole me, okay. <laughs> right? Because that's what people feel more comfortable with. Right. Because if you put all of those things on one uh, on one card, yeah, they'll just, just go, oh, "How's this wanker? Yeah, yeah. Who's this guy he thinking? thinks he's everything? He's dreaming, <laughs> right?" But I was doing both. Slash plumbers, everything, slash. right? <laughs> everything I was doing to it, I think, relatively professional level. So, any, yeah, it was weird. And so you just, you can't say that you do all of those things because people just think you're a wanker. Yeah. yeah. And how, how did you uh, always balance your practicing and uh, management of, of the different skills? Practicing. <laughs> uh, I haven't practiced, unfortunately, anywhere near as much as I should have through my life. Um, it's, uh, uh, look, it, balance i don't know i ended up i've ended up singing probably more than most things i would say that most of my work has come because i sing and play mm -hmm. i play competently and and sing competently. you come as the package deal this, this yeah guy can, that's can both that of those tends things. it was certainly that's where the shania thing came yeah. from they were looking for someone that could play lead guitar parts uh not necessarily be the lead, lead guitar player though. There was a bunch of guitar players mm. in that. In you're, the band. A, you're a money saver because it's instead of yeah, bringing two guys fair, onto the road. They've, fair. It know. was it was efficient to do that. Yeah. Where I do, I was able to kind of pretty much cover both, and they needed someone to do the really tight uh, dual harmony, like duet harmony stuff that Mutt did on the records. Yep, yep. So, you know, as soon as I got there, I ended up sitting down with Mutt and and, 
and uh, Shania and going through all of that really tight stuff and like every little nuance of her of her voice had to be uh, just copied. Just you know? matched. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. matched. And so um, I guess when, when you say balance, I, I, what I've ended up doing is whatever needed to be done at the time, whatever mm -hmm. the gig required, you yeah. know. Um, I enjoy it all. Every, to me, it's all the same thing. The, the you know, engineering or mixing, production, playing, singing is whoops, shut up. Is all the same, and um, it's all. Every part of it is designed to push to the same end, and that is to make the song move people. Mm. And I think what maybe what people don't realise is each one of those things makes the other one better. Absolutely. I was, I was a drummer first, and I always found that the drums helped immensely with the guitar. Really? Because you got that sense of rhythm. I didn't know you played thing. drums too. Yeah, 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 that was my first oh, thing. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, and it's it's like you've got that that knowledge of, okay, the snare's going to be there, the bass is going right. to be there, I can lock in right. with that. Right, and, and one you, informs the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Exactly. Yeah. And then, like like you're saying, you got the knowledge of all the engineering and how everything's going to be put together. Mm. That's going to help your singing. That's going to yeah. help your guitar. I, ideally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's hope so, yeah. Very cool. Um, mm. All right, so so yeah, the, the title of the uh, the podcast is is breaking sad. The first part of that acronym is is stage fright. So mm. you come across as a pretty confident chap. Um, <laughs> stage probably so a little too confident. <laughs> overconfident, some might say. <laughs> yes. Um, so, but stage fright, not just uh, you know, we can we can um, put that in the category of like insecurity or or fear or. So have have you ever struggled with? either putting yourself out there online or recording or in the real world or doing interviews or um, any of that sort of stuff? Uh, interviews, I, I not all that good at. I don't think I tend to waffle. Now you tell me. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, but mm, look, I know what my strengths are, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty brutally honest with myself. Uh, I, I'm not falsely modest. I'm... I'm uh, in the right environment. I can make myself look okay. Mm. Um, if I'm not in the right, if I'm out, stop it. So popular. If I'm honestly, sell, sell. Um, <clears throat> um, if I'm not in the right environment, if I'm uh, fish out of water. Oh boy, it can be embarrassing. Yeah, and then be, and then the nerves and stage fright will hit. Damn right. Yeah, yeah. and and it's well, it, as a result, um, I avoid those situations. You know, if we're in if we're at a jazz gig and someone says, you know, I remember uh, Tommy Emmanuel. Okay. I was at one of his gigs once, right? And uh, I mean, you know, you, you know what? He, he's just a freak of nature. Yeah. And uh, he said, "Hey," he, he saw me down by the mixing desk. Hey, Randall, come. On. Come and come and play us a song. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Don't go anywhere near that. <laughs> no. Well, he, he he's got like twelves on his Telecaster or something he had back then. You know, it was with his electric band, and he had twelves on us. It just felt hard. The oh, so was up? high. No, hell no. But Good you, lord, you I avoid you... that like the plague. No, yeah, okay. no, no. That would just be. <laughs> it would be an embarrassment to everyone. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you know. Uh, Stage fright, no, because uh, well, with the Shania thing, we we rehearsed mm -hmm. 12, 14 hours a day for months, and uh, when we finally actually did shows, it was you knew exactly what yep. to do and when to do it. So, so uh, playing to your strengths and yes. excessive preparation, lots of preparation. That's your I way have to, to avoid that, that. That's yeah, that's what I have to do that because I'm not I'm not a Ed Van Halen kind of like fly by the seat of the pants type no. person. Um, uh, and yeah, just avoid avoid bad situations, avoid inappropriate situations, and prepare well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What about um? So we're talking about balancing your your skills. So what about um? I've I've always had a hard time balancing um, personal relationship lives with music life because they don't coexist very well. I have no personal relationships. <laughs> Well, that's your that's your wife calling you. <laughs> you See, that was her. <laughs> you might not have one after this interview. Um, so, yeah, obviously you're, you're the family man with the family life that, now. But over the years, when you've been living on the other side of the world, how how have you been able to marry those sort of worlds together? Mm, um, well, it it 
was commitment and it was it was expensive and it was hard. Yeah. Uh, even in Europe, when we did a European tour, uh, Susie was uh, there with uh, our our eldest now, uh, but she was three or four at the time. She's like a teenager now. And uh, uh, we had to, for insurance reasons, we couldn't travel on the tour bus most of the time. And so we had to travel ourselves. So it was planes, trains and automobiles getting around Europe. Uh, with the language barrier and stuff, because they're stupid, they don't speak English. And, uh, jo <laughs> jokes, <laughs> jokes, jokes. Heck, I, fe I felt like so inadequate there, you know, because cause they'll, you know, you go to Norway and they say, oh, very sorry about my English, it's not very good. And you go, <laughs> yeah, it's like the fourth language. A little that you better than speak. mine, Norwegian. <laughs> you know. yeah. Yeah. God, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so that was hard, but we we made the commitment that we were not going to be apart for more than two weeks okay. and and uh that's that's just what it took to to uh make that happen uh very hard with a kid and um and strollers and all the concomitant stuff that you had to do but and a lot of the time in america we would drive ourselves from gig to gig and uh straight after susie would have the car packed and and sophie would be asleep in the in the tour bus, yeah. you know, often she'd she'd put her on the bottom bunk, of course, and she'd roll out, and we'd find her sort of just you know uh, up up on her knees <laughs> and 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 like this in the aisle of, no the, of the tour bus. Yeah, and Susie would go in she, when you get to a certain song, she'd know the cue, and she'd go in and get Sophie and get the bags and everything, back the car up to the back of the stage as closely as we could, and put Sophie in the car, and you know I'd run off the stage, we'd get in the car, and we just and beat it before the traffic from the gig yeah you know, so you were able to take your whole uh, personal life with you on tour pretty personally. much yeah, yeah yeah and now a lot uh, i was i was the band member most guilty of that yep. um a lot didn't do it because their uh wives of, uh, and partners had uh jobs of their own you know it, but we had kind of removed ourselves from australia and gone to live over there susie was uh, an actor and voiceover artist and singer back here but didn't really sort of pursue that while we lived in Nashville and it was too hard anyway mm. it was too hard to do it so uh were the bosses and tour managers all supportive of you having having your your family with you was it frowned upon at all yeah it was a bit yeah yeah so but sometimes you, it was yeah. yeah you had to go to bat for it yeah yeah and uh yeah, on that European tour, it became, in fact, so difficult that they had, that they were forced out. Susie was, and Sophie had to come home. Really? Halfway through it, yeah. Okay. Just too difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. But you get that sometimes, you know. It's uh, And, you know, you're seen as, as uh, squeaky will and, and you're a bit of a pain mm. pain in the ass to, to be asking that of people and... Uh, but you know, you you get to the really sort of high levels, which which Shania was. I mean, it was the biggest, the yeah. most successful tours of that so of that gets. era. Yeah. You know, yeah, it set records and. You know. uh, but you know, with Springsteen and stuff, they'd each have you know all the members had their own buses, and they would have the whole family on the bus, and you know, a lot of that time, it, families were would just be part of the furniture, yeah. part of the landscape. Yeah. You know? Just how so, how long was that run that you guys did? Um, uh, which one? The, the, the big one. The, was well, the come, the, coming over tour? Coming over was, well, went from the first gig was May 29, 98, and we finished December 5, 99. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. On the road. No, that's not including rehearsal. You know, yeah, you yeah. Know, months of rehearsal beforehand. The other guys, I was the last piece of the of the band to join, and, and they had already been rehearsing for three months when I came along. Mr. X. So, yeah, <laughs> Mr. X, that's it. Yeah, so okay yeah wow all right yeah so, so so but it's a commitment and it and it's sometimes very hard yeah yeah, yeah. you got to sort of stand your ground and i yeah i felt like i had to yeah, yeah. this is what yeah. i want yeah if and you... some people it just doesn't fly mm. yeah. all right so um i guess what we're talking about upstairs before is 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 um the highs and the lows of sometimes, you know, but I guess you're sort of on top of the musical world at, at that point, having a great mm. steady regular gig. Mm. And then, you know, stuff like that can, can go away. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of musicians right now during with what's going on are finding all their gigs have gone away. 
Um, so you've probably been in that predicament once or twice before where you've had something stable and it's been taken away from you mm. and you found mm. yourself w without a job. So mm. Mm. Um, I guess I guess I'm asking how how you manage the the, the the dry seasons when there's not a lot going on, like coming up with your own motivation and your mm. own your own structure to your day. Hmm. Well, because on on tour it's like itinerary. You're going to be here. You're here. You're told you sure. know, what to do. Yeah, there's total structure to yeah. it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, as soon as we moved back to Australia, I knew that it was um, pretty much over for that sort of life. You know, mm -hmm. that <clears throat> that gig sort of really doesn't exist in Australia no. in the same form at all. Uh, and if it even if it did, I'm I'm I would not be a person that would be considered for it. So. Um, so, uh, was, was uh, there like a, like a mental come down from, yeah. from, yeah, yeah you found yourself a bit flat for a while? <laughs> yeah, it was very hard. Yeah. yeah. And came back here and, and basically be house dad. Yeah. Which is, uh, literally that's what it was, you know, we had a couple of weeks in Hawaii on the way home and, and, and then, uh, house dad, you know, so. And that's been great, and I have a great relationship with the three kids, and I really, I really appreciate that now. Not that I didn't then, but uh, it was harder then, you know. Uh, and you know, I, there was I think Leanne Rhymes needed a guitar player at one point, and uh, but I would have to have been based there, so I'd have to be split between the the two, and like, you yeah, know, I can't, I can't really do that. So, no. so yeah. Uh, there's costs, you know, but but it's been great, and I have a great relationship with with the kids, and they're awesome. Yep. So it's well worthwhile, and you don't get a second chance at that, you know. No. So it's been really positive. Um, staying on top, I don't know. Um, you, you have to be a self starter. I found it really hard. I don't know about you, but through this sort of COVID thing, I found it. You would think that it, uh, it was it would be the uh, easiest time to kind of get us get down here into the studio mm. and, and do work and get motivated so that when it when it does sort of open up uh, yeah. here look this is what I've been doing but I, I don't know it's doesn't, ironic it doesn't always work dude like I found it I have found it so hard to get motivated mm. like I don't know it's I felt like well, why bother anyway? Like, yeah, yeah. like when's it even going to open? And and now the music industry is even more decimated than it was before. It's like mm. I found it very, yeah. really demoralising. Until the last month, the last month I've, or two months I've been down here pretty much every day and okay. working hard on stuff. So, uh, and I feel like I'm. And what's gotten you from the the unmotivated state to, to how you've been the last two months. I just, uh, I was talking with uh, Andy Ferris about it, uh, about exactly the same thing. And he said he felt it, he felt exactly the same. He felt flat and, and couldn't be motivated. And I, and I said, I suppose what it comes down to is we just got to, you just got to sit down and just do it just and just force something. yourself just, yeah. and just start. And so I, uh, I took my own advice and I, I just came down here and I just started doing it. And I thought that's the only thing that's going to, you've got to lift yourself up by your bootstraps. And that's yeah. what they say, the old old school saying. Yeah. And that's what I did. I just came down here and just started, just forced myself to mm. turn on the damn computer. Here we go. Let's do something. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's all. And once uh, that's kind of, it, 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 it does start a snowball mm. kind of effect and it has, it, develops motivation I, I heard something last night um in a movie I was watching a movie and said fake it till you make it you know and and that's okay yeah just sit down and start yeah well humans kind of uh we we like to have deadlines and, and yeah you know people yeah. people are always cramming to get you know when, when there's some sort of incentive yes to... damn right yeah and i always have always worked better when there's With been the deadlines, a yeah. deadline yeah. but you know it's hard when that, when it's not so i've just yeah, I've just forced myself. There's to this do it. there's a study of rats where they put a rat in a maze and put a bit of cheese in front of it mm. and measure by tension on a spring how fast it will go towards the cheese. Oh man! Yeah. And it goes at a certain speed, but if you put the smell of a cat behind it, 
it oh, goes it's ten times more as motivated. Yeah, yeah. And so humans are like, like if there's the something, Mick Fanning factor. Yeah, yeah. If there's <laughs> when some, you're if there's shark something, chasing, you, we know you that finishing this album will be good for us. Yeah, right. Yeah, but if there's something, if there's fear pushing oh, from behind as right. well. If you've got good both point. factors, very yeah. good. Yeah, that, right. That was one of my reasons for great. collaborating with so many people because yeah. often a lot of days I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to yeah. do anything, but it's yeah, like yeah. you get an email and Brett Gar said has just sent you tracks. Wow. Like, well, I'm going to go in the studio. I'm going to. I better yeah, pull yeah. my finger out and do something with this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sitting on my ass today. Yeah, and and wasting his time as well as your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So I think, and you can force yourself. You can give yourself um, external motivation if you know that you're going to struggle. You know, mm. like. Get, get yourself into a situation mm. where, you know, the guitar is right next to you and it's plugged in and you'll feel like an idiot if you don't pick it up. So yeah, yeah, true. Put That's yourself, it. Put yourself in the position. Yeah. That's it, mate. Yeah, good. Yeah, totally. All mm. right. Um, so, yeah, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, you know, we're talking about the, the highs and lows, um, and sometimes those things uh, be on your control mm. and sometimes they the com communication in the music industry is not always the best. And I was, I was telling you about a situation that I was in mm. where I recorded some guitar parts for someone and yeah. then found out months later by hearing the track on Spotify that my guitar parts weren't even used. Mm. So you've been in situations where you've, you've had gigs come and go and, and not even been told about it. Mm. And I guess instinctively we would want to... Uh, kick a tantrum, tell the person to get effed or go on Facebook mm. and have a rant. <laughs> but I was really amazed at how you always kind of like took the high ground and stayed level. So I guess what would be your advice with someone that maybe lost a gig or, or, or someone mm. like me that wasn't on a, on an album that they thought they would be on? And yeah. Like your, your attitude basically is uh, really impressed me and your, oh. your, your level headedness. Oh, well. So I, I guess, can you, can you speak to that at all? Um, well, yeah, we've all been in those situations where you, uh, don't you think, where, where, well, like this situation with you, where you spend time and you're invested in a, in a certain thing, uh, not necessarily for money either, you know. No. I, I've been in, there's been a couple of band situations that I've been in where I felt that, uh, and it was for a long time, years, years, and... I felt that I'd brought something to the table and uh, and then you uh, there's no communication, no nothing, and then you find out that um, they just moved on and gotten someone else, and that's okay. I, you know, I really don't. I suppose it might look like I've met it with such equanimity. However, um, it's probably because, you know, that's not, I'm not, invested enough in it for it to uh, really eat away at my at, at, at who I am or mm -hmm. it's not my identity or, or anything like that so in those situations it's just been disappointing it's like damn yeah you know, why why wouldn't you call me just, yeah, just, yeah yeah just call it's not it's, that hard it's not, it's just common courtesy just yeah. make a phone call it's it's really hard and I just go yeah man cool it's, no worries I understand thanks for the call appreciate it. check you it's a two minute phone call mm -hmm. you know um, and that's happened a couple of times. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, uh, I don't know. You just got to move on. And and in that instance, it also gave me a kick in the pants to get up and get my own thing uh, yeah. rolling along as well. Yeah, so, yeah. which I did uh, then as well. I liked what you said that um, there that it's not my identity because mm. um, I think people have a hard time separating oh, themselves man. from their artist. That is and when, that when is people ask me about internet a, trolls and critical. stuff. Yeah. How do you deal with like the internet trolls mm. and all that sort of mm. thing? I say, mm. well, they they don't know me. They're right. not they're not insulting me, they're insulting my stage persona, my whatever I've put out there, my character. Do you get that? Oh heaps. Well, I just, what? I just I just had Are a video you serious? I just had a video that went how, how? went viral with two million views, so I got a, a shitload of Oh, the, that was the, the Karen the, what the, the parody you, thing, yeah. Boy, so my inbox my inbox is full of Karen's who hate me. But then like I was wow. I was showing my parents this one the other day and so this this person commented on YouTube and said, I hope your whole family dies of coronavirus for this disgusting video you've made. So that's the level of trolling that I'm dealing with out there. But you've got to separate yourself from it. It's like, he doesn't know it's me. It's not personal. Yeah. Because he doesn't know you personally. How can it be personal? Therefore, you have to be, have the discipline to not take it personal. Yeah, which is not always... But that's not easy, no. man. No. No. 
cheaper, especially when they're bringing your family into the comments. Oh, like, yeah, no, that's, the, that's there's nothing low. right about that. It's crossing a line. No. Yeah. Wow. Oh, absolutely. No, I get, I get some, uh, they're not trolls. I get some, I've had a couple, but not much, uh, but mostly more to do with politi politics and, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Because you're, yeah. you're pretty outspoken with your right. opinions and things. Yeah, but I have wacky opinions that are kind of, I've got a foot in both camps most of the time. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So, anyway, so people don't like that. And if I'll say something that, that Trump has done, something that's positive that he's done, which is true, he's done some positive things, and then you, 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 everyone thinks that you're, oh, you must be a Democrat. And then you'll say, oh, yeah, what about this and this and this the Democrats have done? And they go, oh, you must be Trump. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm none of them. I can't yeah, yeah, stand yeah. any of them. They're all snouts in the trough, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Anyway, but, you know, people love to, it's it's back to that pigeonholing thing again. They like to have you boxed up, and, and that's what you are. Therefore, we can throw stones at it. Mm. You know, yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. He's just, yeah, they, na they, they narrow you down to one. Yep. One yep. opinion or one well, thing that you've done. It makes them much more comfortable if you if they feel like they've got you cornered yeah, or, yeah. or something. You know, it's a strange thing about human nature. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, look. I'm really sad to hear that about. Golly, about that song, man. I just, oh I, yeah. I, wow. Yeah. That's just extraordinary. Wow. Yeah. Well, my 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 response to a lot of them, if 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 some like a lot of people named Karen were personally upset about it, which I can I can understand that. <laughs> And if they oh, if they messaged a me joke. with a with a dignified email about why they hated it, I would write back with a dignified right. response about thank you, you for know, your thoughts. Yeah. yeah, and 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 my advice to them, which is my advice to everyone, I, I said, look. So usually, what they would tell me is, I've had a terrible year. Um, I've lost mm. my job because of COVID. I'm right. having a bad time, and now there's this Karen right. thing, and so now I can't tell people my name without them laughing. Mm. So it's a, it was a variety of factors, and and this song that they've seen mm -hmm. pop up has has been the nail in the coffin that's made right, feel right. the same way. So I said to them, if you are someone that's susceptible to be insulted or and offended by mm -hmm. a Karen parody, maybe next time you see a video that says Karen parody in the title, don't click on it. Because they're, they're choosing to be yeah, offended. Yeah. They're looking oh, for absolutely. it. Oh, you know? absolutely. Like... I didn't send it to your inbox like you found me. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, there's... Wow, um, I... People yeah, that want to be extreme. offended will find ways to be offended. Oh, mate, damn right. Yeah. And you don't have to click on things. Ricky Gervais is great with that. Oh, he's yeah. Like, oh, he's a genius. He is just brutal with people. Yeah, he says, yeah. oh, you're offended. Sorry. Yeah, well, well, so one thing that he always brings up is that we, we know what the right thing is and we know what the wrong thing is, and the reason that the joke is funny is we're laughing at the wrong thing. Correct. And that's, Correct. that just sums it up. It's, it's like, a joke. Yeah. If, we were, if, it, if it was right, we wouldn't be laughing at it. So yeah. we're laughing yeah. at the inappropriateness, right. the silliness. Exactly. exactly. All of yes. that. So but, true, um, mate. Yeah. In this day and age, people can't seem to separate no. the two, right and wrong. It's no. like, no, it has to be politically correct. It has to be in the middle. It's not, no. Well, then it's not funny. Yeah. It's dead. Mate, it, I always remember some, someone told me years, oh, decades ago, if you want to offend no one, then say nothing. <laughs> That's pretty That's much great. it, isn't it? Say nothing, offend no one. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say nothing. Good Lord. I'm here for a short time. I'm gonna you got you can't remain silent. Some no. things you cannot remain silent about. No. no. You can't please all the people all the time. Like Julian Assange. Good Lord. Unbelievable. Mm. Witness K. You know, all of that stuff. It's just anyway. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right, well um, I just had one more thing that I wanted mm. to talk about. So th thank you again for, for doing this mm. today. Cause, right, yeah, fun. Yeah, these these things aren't always the most uh, comfortable to talk about. Mm. Oh, yeah. But, yeah um, it can be hard. Yeah, so I guess the last thing, um, well, when I first met you, I was really amazed with how um, how giving you were with your, your knowledge and your time. I just give. And, I just keep giving. Yeah. And I give and I give till I feel like I can give no more. And then I give more. You're somewhat of a saint, <laughs> some might say. <laughs> oh, please. Yep. Um, no, so I guess I guess I I haven't always found everyone to be um, wanting to share a piece of their pie in the music industry. There's that tall poppy thing that, that oh yeah, oh, he's trying That's to cut, still alive cut in and well. Yeah. yeah, well, especially in Sydney, like it's. Yeah. it's Do you find that? Yeah, yeah, it's very territorial. But I didn't find it with you. Like um, I have no. I have no piece of pie. That's probably why. <laughs> I got the no pie. <laughs> it's not, I got the no pie. <laughs> it's almost like you're Italian. It's, <laughs> um, Something like no, that. but it's like, it, but it comes back to that identity thing. People are jealously guarding their little piece of the yeah. sound pit, sand pit, you know? Mm. Yeah. 
anyway, yeah, that's interesting. Well, it's good. Well, so, so, uh, so, how how do you um, how do you avoid being um, jealous, competitive, tall poppy, territorial, and, and and keep an open mind with with other artists and and not be threatened by them and things like that? Um, oh, I just uh, I've got a whole. You saw up there. I've got a whole drawer full of CDs, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hundreds and hundreds of them. There's not just one, uh, and that's because I like. There's millions of artists that I love. Mm -hmm. Lots, dozens and dozens, hundreds of artists that I love, um, and I've got my little thing to say, and I'm one of those. And and there's lots of other people too. And you know, if it comes down to just guitar playing, I mean, there is a million. Mate, you play the pants off. I could never play anything like that. But it, that's not what I'm about. That's not. Uh, there's lots of people that sing better, and and uh, there's things about my voice that really annoy me, and I can't stand. It doesn't matter. It's 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 about the end result and what I'm trying to say with my music. That's what's important, mm -hmm. and it comes down to the what what I'm putting in, what I put in the songs, the lyric content, and the overall thrust of the the overall package. You know, that's what's important to me, and nobody else can do that. Yeah. What I do, yeah. nobody. I'm the only, I'm the only me there is. That's right. Right, and and so I'm trying to um, package that thing in a. Uh, I hate to use such a merchandising type term, but I'm trying to uh, wrap that up in something that is uh, uh, worthy of presentation. Sure, you know, sure. and that's just my thing, and it's not better or worse than other people's things. It just is what it is, and mm -hmm. some people it'll resonate with, and other people it won't. So. Being jealous of someone else, well, I, I, what do you want? I don't want to be. Do I want to be them? No, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just me. That's the best thing I can be, and that's just what I'm going to do. And I'm just secure it, that in myself, in that what I have is something that is, uh, I hope, is worthwhile. I think it, it's worthwhile to me, and I hope that other, it resonates with other people and those people it doesn't resonate with it's okay they're not my people yeah yeah it's all right that's really good advice man hmm. well thank you for uh, thank you for this chat today you're one yeah. of my favorite people to work with ah, and... jay you're a legend mate yeah how's the voice the voice on him and it's good lord kick on kick on <laughs> <laughs> um no it's been See a pleasure ya. pleasure working with you good. man and always a pleasure always randall waller See ya. cheers See you guys jay